Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston, and welcome to lecture three of Introductory Linear Algebra. Today we're going to introduce something called linear combinations, okay? And the idea here is, in the previous two lectures, we introduced two vector operations. We introduced vector addition and scalar multiplication, okay? Well, linear combinations, they're just what you get if you do those two vector operations over and over and over again. If you do a whole bunch of scalar multiplications and a whole bunch of vector additions, then you get something that's called a linear combination. Okay, so let's look at the precise definition, okay? So the setup here is we're given k vectors ahead of time, okay? So these k vectors, think of them as fixed. We don't have any control over what they are. It's just someone comes up to us and gives us v1 and v2 all the way up to vk, these k fixed vectors, okay? Well, any vector that we can build out of these k fixed vectors is called a linear combination of them, okay? So any vector that we can uh, get as a result of a scalar multiplication times v1, plus a scalar multiplication times v2, plus a scalar multiplication times vk. In other words, any vector that we can build out of scalar multiplication and vector addition from those k starting vectors, well, it's called a linear combination of those k vectors. Okay, so to start off with, let's just go through some examples to make sure that we understand this definition. Okay, so the questions that we're gonna look at are, hey, is this vector here a linear combination of these other vectors? Okay, so in this first example that we're looking at, 1, 1, 1 and minus 1, 0, 1, those are the k fixed starting vectors. Like this is v1 and this is v2. And the question that we're asking is, well, can we write this vector as a linear combination of these guys? In other words, can we use some scalar multiplications and vector additions to, to turn these two vectors into this one here, 1, 2, 3? All right, so mathematically, what I'm asking is, do there exist scalars C1 and C2 such that C1 times this first vector, 1, 1, 1, plus C2 times the second vector, minus 1, 0, 1, equals the desired vector, 1, 2, 3, okay? Can I find scalars C1 and C2 such that that's true? Okay, and the way that I'm gonna answer this question is I'm gonna expand out this linear combination on the right, okay? I'm gonna do the scalar multiplications and the vector addition. And when I do that, what I get on the right-hand side is the vector, C1 minus C2, C1, and C1 plus C2. I apologize, there's a typo here that C3 should be a C2. There is no C3. Okay, and the way that I get that is, I mean, you just look one entry at a time. First entry over here is just gonna be C1. First entry over here is minus C2. So when I add them up, I get C1 minus C2 in the first entries. And similarly for the second and third entries, just look at the second and third entries of this vector up here and do the vector addition. Okay, and so now the question is, hey, can I make this vector equal 1, 2, 3? Can I choose C1 and C2 properly so that that happens? Okay, and maybe the easiest way to do this is start off by looking in the middle entries here, right? Because, hey, if I want these vectors to be the same as each other, then, well, I must have C1 equal to 2. Okay, so that's sort of a gimme right away. I know, okay, C1's got to be 2. Okay, and now I'll look at one of the other two entries. I also need C1 minus C2 to equal 1. Okay, but I already know that C1 equals 2. I already know that C1 equals 2. So if I need C1 minus C2 to be 1, and I know that C1 equals 2, well, I can just plug that in. So I get 2 minus C2 equals 1. So I know C2 has to equal 1, right? 2 minus 1 equals 1. So C2's got to be 1. Okay, and now there's one more thing that I've got to do to make sure that this actually is a valid solution. Okay, at this point, I know that if there's a solution, well, the only possibility is C1 is 2 and C2 is 1, okay? And to show that it actually is a solution, I've got to make sure that the third entry is right as well. So plug these into the third entry and hope that I get 3, okay? And C1 plus C2, well, that's 2 plus 1, and yeah, that equals 3. So this really is a solution. If I, if I plug in 2 here and I plug in 1 here and then do the addition, I really will get the vector 1, 2, 3, okay? So that makes me happy. All right. Let's do another example, okay? Let's show that one, two, three is not a linear combination of these other two vectors, okay? So this time my starting vectors are one, one, zero and two, one, zero, which is a bit, bit different from the starting vectors that I had in the previous example. Okay, and this time I'm gonna show that one, two, three is not a linear combination of these two vectors. All right, so the setup is the same. What we wanna do is we wanna solve this equation. We wanna determine whether or not there exists a C1 and C2 such that this happens. Okay, well, again, my approach is I'm gonna just sort of combine all this. I'm gonna do that linear combination. Okay, and when I do, the first entry I see is gonna be C1 plus 2C2. Okay, the second entry is gonna be C1 
plus C2. And the third entry is going to be C1 times 0 plus C2 times 0, so just 0. Okay, and now I look at this and just start comparing entries. Okay, so I want 1 equals C1 plus 2C2. I want 2 equals C1 plus C2. And I want 3 equals 0. And then big, you know, blaring alarm bells go off in our heads and we say, wait, but 3 doesn't equal 0. Okay, and that has nothing to do with C1 and C2. No matter what I choose C1 and C2 to be, 3 is never going to be 0. Okay, so that tells me right there there's no way to solve this equation. So there's no C1 and C2 that works. So no. 1, 2, 3 is not a linear combination of those other two vectors, okay? The point is, if you take linear combinations of these two vectors, you're still always going to have a zero in that third entry, okay? So you, no, nothing that has a non-zero entry in that third uh, entry is going to be a linear combination of those two vectors. All right, so sort of our reason for looking at linear combinations is often what we're going to do in linear algebra is we're going to sort of take a small set of starting vectors and use that to construct, you know, very large sets of vectors via a linear combinations, okay? And one of the most common set of starting vectors that we're going to look at are things called the standard basis vectors, okay? These basis vectors, they're very useful because we can build lots of things out of them via linear combinations. And what are they? Well, they're just the vectors that have a single one in one of their entries and zeros everywhere else, okay? So for example, what we call the first standard basis vector well, it's the vector that has one in its first entry and zeros everywhere else, okay? And we denote it like this. We call it the vector E1, okay? So, like, usually we just use lowercase uh, letters to denote, you know, whatever vector, right? Like, if I say V with an arrow over top of it, that's just some vector, right? It's not a specific one. But if I ever, ever, ever say E1, you know, I'm always, always, always talking about this first standard basis vector. That's a special specific vector. Okay, similarly, if I say E2... Now I'm talking about the vector that has a one in a second entry and zeros everywhere else. Okay, so it's this vector here. Okay, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, and in general, if I ever say E with some subscript where the subscript is the number, so E sub J where J is some number, then what I mean is I mean the vector that has a whole bunch of zeros everywhere, except there's a single one in the Jth spot. Okay, and that's called the Jth standard basis vector. Okay, so before we start doing things with these standard basis vectors, I just want to take a little brief detour and let's draw these standard basis vectors, at least in the two and three dimensional cases where we can draw vectors, okay, just so that we really understand what they are. Okay, so maybe the first uh, note that I should make is that if you're working in n dimensional space, then there are n different standard basis vectors, right? Because there are n spots that you can put that single one in the entry, in the vector. Okay, so for example, if we're working in R2, two dimensional space, there are two standard basis vectors, right? Because there's two spots that I can put the one in that vector. There's E1, which has the one in the first spot, and there's E2, which has the one in the second spot, okay? And if we draw these vectors, well, these are just the vectors, you know, the first one, E1, it points over in the x direction one unit, and well, zero units up and down, so it's not going up and down at all, okay? So E1 just points over to the right a little bit along the x-axis. And similarly, E2, it just points up along the y-axis a little bit. It has no x component. It points directly along the y-axis, okay? And standard basis vectors in general do that. They just point a distance of 1 along the coordinate axes. Okay, so let, let's do the same thing in three-dimensional space now. Okay, so in three-dimensional space, now we've got three different standard basis vectors. This time, E1 is 1, 0, 0, right? All zeros except a 1 in the first spot. E2 is 0, 1, 0. Now the one's in the second spot. And there's also an E3 this time because there is a third entry. Okay, so 0, 0, 1 is called E3 because the one's in the third spot. Okay, and again, we can draw these, or rather computers can draw these for us. I'm not going to draw it by hand. And all these are are the vectors that point a distance of 1 in the direction of the x, y, and z coordinate axes. Okay, so it looks like this. Okay, so, I mean, E1 points in the x direction because it has 1 in its x component. Okay, E2 has a 1 in the y component, so it points along the y axis, and E3 has a 1 in the z component, so it points up along the z axis. Okay, and I mean, you can maybe imagine that something similar happens in higher dimensions, but it's probably a little bit difficult to visualize. Okay, but in R4, for example, you're going to have four standard basis vectors. In R5, you're going to have five, and so on, because you have five coordinate axes in R5. All right. Our interest in those standard basis vectors is that every single vector in n-dimensional space can be written as a linear combination of them. In particular, if you start off with a vector v1 up to vn, then the way that you can build that vector v 
out of those standard basis vectors is just use those entries of v as the coefficients in the linear combination, right? You just do v1 times e1, because remember, e1 has a 1 in the first entry and 0 is everywhere else, so when you do this scalar multiplication, now you're going to have a v1 in the first entry and 0 is everywhere else. Okay, similarly, in the second term here, v2 times e2, well, because e2 has a 1 in the second entry, then v2 e2 has a v2 in the second entry and zeros everywhere else. So then when you add these guys up, you're going to have v1, v2, and then zeros. Okay, and then the next term is going to be v3 e3, that puts a v3 in the third entry, v4 e4 puts a v4 in the fourth entry, and so on down the line, down to vn en, which puts a vn in the nth entry, the, the last entry. So adding these all up, it just sort of builds this vector one entry at a time. All right, so let's do a couple examples again to make sure that we get this idea so that we make sure that we understand what's going on here. So let's start off, let's compute this linear combination here, three times E1 plus two times E2 plus E3, okay? And I sort of need to tell you what dimension I'm working in because the notation for standard basis vectors doesn't indicate that anywhere, okay? This, I mean, you know that you're in at least three dimensions here because I've got three standard basis vectors, but yeah, I'm actually in exactly three dimensions here. That's why I'm saying there. So let's compute this vector. Okay, and we're going to do it very explicitly here. Okay, I'm going to write out very explicitly what's going on here. 3 times e1, well, that's 3 times 1, 0, 0. Minus 2 times e2, so that's minus 2 times 0, 1, 0. And then plus e3, well, that's just 0, 0, 1. Okay, now I'm going to do the scalar multiplication. So I'm going to multiply these two scalars in. So then I'm going to get 3, 0, 0, plus 0, minus 2, 0, and then plus 0, 0, 1. And then lastly, I'm going to add up those vectors. And when I do, I see I get the vector 3 minus 2, 1, right? I'm just, I just get one of the entries from each of these three terms in the sum. Okay, and notice what happens here. The entries in this vector, they're exactly the coefficients in this linear combination. 3 minus 2, 1. 3 minus 2, 1. Okay, and that always happens. And that's the point. Okay, these standard basis vectors they just sort of convert entries of a vector into coefficients of linear combinations. Okay, let, let's do this the other way around to make sure that we really understand what's going on here. So let's do it the other way around. Let's write this vector as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. All right, and the way you do that, again, you just peel off the entries into coefficients of a linear combination. Okay, so you just read them off. 3, 5, minus 2, 1. So it's going to be 3e1 plus 5e2 minus 2e3 minus e4. Okay, so always, 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 you're just reading off the coefficients, right? The coefficients in the linear combination are the entries in the vector, as long as you're using these standard basis vectors, and that's why we like them. All right, so that will do it for today's lecture. I will see you next class when we start talking about things like the dot product.